In part four of lecture seven, we will discuss controlling access to data. It may seem strange for a derived class to need to use accessors to get access to the data belonging to the base class. The reason is because these items were declared as private, and private is exactly what the name implies, private. We already know that private variables and methods can only be used by objects of the same class, and public variables and methods can be used by any class. What we're looking for is something in between, something that will allow items that are private to be shielded from the rest of the world, but at the same time, allowing their use by objects belonging to derived classes. And this is where the word protected comes into use. Protected data and methods can be accessed by objects belonging to the class to which they belong. But they are also available to objects belonging to classes that are derived from the base class in which they appear. This allows you a degree of protection of data, but less than that if they were private specifically because we want to be able to use them in derived classes as well. The diagram shows three classes. The first one is a public class, A, and it has three variables, all integers. V1 is public, V2 is protected, V3 is private. B is also a public class with no direct relationship with A. Because v1 is public, it can access v1. However, not being related to a, it cannot access the protected integer v2. And because v3 is private, it can't access that either. C, on the other hand, is a derived class from a. It can access v1 because v1 is public. It can access v2 because it's protected and it is a derived class of A. But it can access V3 because V3 is private. Object is a class in Java. Every class that exists in Java is either directly or indirectly derived from object. Every class inherits its properties and methods. And this should include to string and equals. In most cases, this will mean writing and overriding to string and equals, as we saw earlier. We are going to look at another example of a base class that also has two derived classes. The base class in this case is called bank account. There will also be two derived classes, savings account and checking account. Some of the information in a bank account will always be there no matter what kind of an account it is. The name of the depositor, there may be an account number, there may be a balance. Other information may be unique to each of the derived classes. Bank account has three properties. We begin the class with public class bank account, private string name with the depositor's name, protected string account number with the account number, private double balance. We begin the methods with the constructors. The default constructor first, public bank account. Name equals new, no name. Account num equals string, no number. Balance equals zero. The names no name and no number will serve as dummies. Balance is set at zero because we don't have anything in there yet. Now a conversion constructor. Public bank account, string new name, string new account num, double new balance. Name equals new string, new name. Account num equals new string, new account num. Balance equals new balance. In this way, we have all three properties initialized. The copy constructor is fairly straightforward. Public bank account. Bank account original object. Name equals new string original object dot name. Account num equals new string 
original object account num. Balance equals original object dot balance. In this regard, we have copied over each of the properties into the new object. We'll also handle now the, the method deposit. Public void deposit double deposit amount. Balance plus equals deposit amount, adding that amount to the balance. System out print name, and then comma account number and the account number, and then quote a comma a new line and deposited. Now this is this is system out print, not printlin. So we're still on the line, and then we'll use formatted printing. System out printf quote dollar percent four point two f to format the number, making the balance dollar percent four point two f backslash n for new line, and then the two values to be filled in. Deposit amount balance. And now the withdrawal method. Public void withdraw double withdrawal amount. If balance is greater than or equal to withdrawal amount, balance minus equals withdrawal. I can't take money out unless I have at least that much money or maybe more. System out print will print without taking us to a new line. Name plus comma quote comma account number blank space unquote plus account number plus quote comma new line withdrew unquote. With this, I've written most of the first information. I'll now finish by putting in the, num the dollar amount. System.out.printf percent 4.2f, making the balance dollar percent 4.2f new line. And then I'll fill in the values, withdrawal amount and comma balance. Else, system out printlin, sorry you don't have that much in your account. Now the accessors, public string get account num, return new string account num. So now we have a new string in existence whose reference we can return. Public double get balance, return balance. And now the mutators, protected void set balance, double new balance, balance equals new balance. This will be available not just to objects of this class, but also to objects belonging to derived classes. And now a mutator for the account number. Protected void set account num string new account num. Account num equals new account num. Like before, this will be available not just to objects of this class, but to objects of derived classes derived from this one. And lastly, to string. Public string to string return name plus space account number unquote plus account num plus quote balance of dollar unquote plus string format quote percent 4.2 f unquote comma balance this will give us a string in the form of money with two decimal places and we'll have a dollar sign in front and now the derived class checking account we start with its header public class Checking account extends bank account. Next, we will have private int check count. We will count the number of checks because after 10, we will pay 20 cents per check cashed. Now the per check charge, private final double check fee equals 0 0.20. The 20 cent per check fee will remain the same no matter how long we run this. Private final int free checks equal 10 because it will remain a constant 10 free checks. And now the default constructor. Public checking account super, as we call the constructor for the base class. Check count equals zero. The conversion constructor reads public checking account, string new name, string new account number, double new balance, int new check count. We're going to initialize all these values. We'll then call super new name, new account num, new balance, because these properties belong to the base class. Check count equal new check count, and that's the end of the conversion constructor. The copy constructor is fairly straightforward as well. Public checking account, 
checking account original object. We'll use the base classes conversion constructor here, super original object dot name, comma original object dot account num, comma original object dot get balance. And in this regard, we can set all three of these at once. And now the withdrawal method, which will allow us to withdraw an amount and print information about the transaction. Public void withdraw, double withdrawal amount. If the money's there, we will be able to withdraw it. If super dot get balance is greater than or equal to withdrawal amount, we'll use get balance, a method that belongs to the base class super set balance and then we'll give it super dot get balance minus withdrawal amount and in this regard will change the balance system out print lin name plus quote comma account number unquote plus account number plus quote comma new line withdrew unquote and now system out print dollar percent 4.2 f making the balance dollar percent 4.2 F new line and we will fill these two in with withdrawal amount and super get balance otherwise we'll just print a polite message system out printlin sorry you don't have that much in your account the remainder of withdraw that's one more check we cashed is it still free check count plus plus adds one if check count is greater than free checks Super dot set balance super dot get balance minus check fee. And now we'll use printf again, system out printf. There was a check fee of dollar percent four point two F unquote plus quote deducted, comma, new line, making the balance dollar percent four point two F new line, unquote, and then we'll fill in the check fee and super dot get balance. Now, if that's not the case, we'll print system out println. There are still plus paren free checks minus check count close paren plus quote free checks left unquote. The end of the of the method and the end of the class. Lastly, we run a driver method that will test our classes for us. Public class test bank account public static void main string args bank account ba equals new bank account quote john f x smith unquote comma quote j f x s twenty one twenty one unquote comma four hundred checking account c a equals new checking account quote robert m siegfried unquote comma quote r m s thirteen unquote comma fifty comma one b a deposit 300, BA withdrawal 560, CA deposit 500, CA withdrawal 200. System out print lin, the account holder's name is BA.name. System out print lin BA, system out print out CA. And let's take a look and see what the output is going to be. The output will document a series of deposits and withdrawals. First, John Smith will deposit $700 and withdraw $140. Robert M. Siegfried will deposit $500 and withdraw $200. We'll find out that there are still eight free checks left. The account holder's name in this case is John F. X. Smith because that's what BA is associated with. And we print out the two balances along with the names of the account holders and the account numbers.